hi everybody welcome to my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts and my fb page dr srinivas concepts this is dr srinivas neurologist from rajmandri andhra pradesh india i am also the medical author of the book focused neurology my email is sriklpm@gmail.com today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic the ophthalmoscopy and the ocular fundus the ophthalmoscopy and the ocular fundus ophthalmoscope is an equipment equipment used by neurologists and ophthalmologists to see the ocular fundus the standard direct ophthalmoscope has dials that adjust the light apertures and filters and allows the examiners to focus the red free filter is used for examining the blood vessels hemorrhages and examining the nerve fiber layer the ocular fundus is the only place in the body where blood vessels can be visualized directly so changes in the retinal vasculature such as diopters and hypertension can be visualized directly ophthalmoscopy in the neurologic examination the areas of primary concern when we are doing ophthalmoscopy are looking at the disc the macula the arteries the disc the macula the arteries now let's see each one of them first let's talk about the optic disc the disc is normally round and nasal margin is slightly blurred as compared to the temporal margin the disc consists of a peripheral neuroretinal rim and a central cup the normal cup to disc ratio is about 0.1 to 0.5 in patients with glaucoma the cup to disc ratio is increased and how do we locate at the optic disc it's sometimes may be difficult especially for the novice doctors to locate the disc a helpful technique is to find a retinal blood vessel focus on it and then follow it to the disc so sometimes it may be difficult to locate the optic disc so what is the helpful technique a helpful technique is to find a retinal blood vessel focus on it and then follow it to the disc the color and appearance of the disc may change in a variety of circumstances the disc may change color to abnormally pale in optic atrophy or to abnormally red with disc edema visual function provides a critical clue to the nature of disc abnormalities patients with acute papillary edema and those with disc anomalies have normal visual acuity very very important concepts patients with acute papillary edema will have normal visual acuity they do not have visual loss they have normal visual acuity visual fields and color perception if there is impairment of these functions then we have to suspect optic neuropathies impairment of these functions is the rule in patients suffering from optic neuropathies of any etiology and therefore the first step in evaluating a questionable op- abnormal disc is therefore a careful assessment of vision if vision is good that means it is only papillary edema in papillary edema the vision is normal they have a normal visual acuity therefore the first step in evaluating a questionable abnormal disc is therefore a careful assessment of vision yeah this is about optic disc now let's see the macula the macula is a dark area that lies about 2 disc diameters temporal to and slightly below the disc the macula appears darker than the surrounding retina because the retina is thinner in that area allowing more of the deeply colored choroid to show through the macula may be seen more easily with a red free filter it is sometimes easier to visualize the macula if the patient looks directly into the light 
So sometimes it may be difficult to look at the macula to find out the macula. So what is the helpful technique? Ask the patient to look directly into the light. Then you can easily visualize the macula. For optic fundus, you have to you have to find out a vessel, then follow it till it leads to the optic disc. So following a blood vessel will help you to localize to locate the optic fundus. To locate macula, ask the patient to look directly to, to the light so that you can easily visualize macula. Macula comes immediately as you look into the light. Macula diseases causes impairment of central acuity, impaired color vision and central scotoma. Remember when the optic nerve head, example papilledema, there is no loss of visual acuity, no central scotoma and no impairment of color vision. But if macula is affected, macular disease causes impaired, marked impairment of central acuity, impaired color vision and central scotoma. Macular star, it is a radial pattern of exudates in the perimacular retina commonly seen in hypertension and papilledema. Photostress test. Now, how do we differentiate whether it is an optic nerve disease or a macular disease? Very difficult to differentiate, but easy way to differentiate is by a test known as photo stress test. Prolongation of the time to recover vision after direct intense light stimulation can sometimes help to distinguish macular from optic nerve disease. Prolongation of the time to recover vision after direct intense light stimulation can sometimes help to distinguish macular from optic nerve disease. So what happens in macula? In macular disease, the photoreceptors require longer time to recover from bleaching of the retinal pigments after exposure to a bright light. Recovery time may reach several minutes in macular disorders such as macular edema and macular degeneration. Whereas in optic nerve disease, the photostress test is normal. So the photo stress test is normal, it is optic nerve disease. If the photo stress test, the time is prolonged, it is macular disease. Yeah, having seen optic nerve head macular, now let's see another important area of ophthalmoscopy is looking at the arteries. The central retinal artery enters the eye through the physiologic cup and divides into superior and inferior branches which in turn divide into nasal and temporal branches yielding four prominent arterial trunks emanating from the emanating from the disc the ciliaretinal arteries arise from the posterior ciliary arteries enters the eye along the disc margin and perfuse the peripapillary retina they become prominent as shunt vessels when there is optic nerve compression so the ciliaretinal arteries, the posterior ciliary arteries, they become prominent as shunt vessels when there is optic nerve compression. Monoocular altitudinal defects are characteristic of disease in the distribution of the central retinal artery. Central vision may be spared because the macula is often perfused by the ciliaretinal arteries. Very important. Optic nerve head, central retinal artery, but if you take macula, the macula is responsible for central vision and central vision may be spared despite the central retinal artery occlusion because the macula and the central vision uh, they are perfused by the ciliaretinal arteries. Other abnormalities of the ocular fundus. The fundus may reveal evidence of hypertensive retinopathy in a patient with stroke because one of the important risk factors for stroke is hypertension. In fact, hypertension is the single most important modifiable risk factor for stroke. And the single most important modifiable risk factor for coronary artery disease is dyslipidemia. So for stroke patients, hypertension is a very important modifiable risk factor. And therefore, we have to always look at the ocular fundus. The fundus may reveal evidence of hypertensive retinopathy in a patient with stroke. In a patient with hypertensive encephalopathy, there may be spasm of retinal arterioles. Retinal emboli may be seen in patients with CVA. The sub, the finding of sub -hyloid or pre-retinal hemorrhage is pathognomonic of sub hemorrhage. Another important concept is cherry red spot. 
In younger patients, if we see cherry red spot, we have to suspect storage disorders like Tay-Sachs disease. And in elderly patients, we have to suspect central retinal artery occlusion. But what is this cherry red spot? Cherry red spot. It is as the name as the name indicates. There's a spot which is cherry red in color. The presence of a cherry red spot indicates a storage disorder in the younger patient. Example: Tay-Sachs disease or a central retinal artery occlusion in an older patient. So in a younger patient, if we see cherry red spot, we have to suspect a storage disorder like Tay-Sachs disease. If a cherry red spot is seen in an elderly person, we have to suspect central retinal artery occlusion. Why we see cherry red spot in storage disorders? In storage disorders, the cherry red spot is seen because of the accumulation of the abnormal material within the cell layers of the retina. Because of the relative transparency of the macula, the underlying choroid is visible. So that is the mechanism of cherry red spot in storage disorders like Tay-Sachs disease. But what is the mechanism of cherry red spot in central retinal artery occlusion? In central retinal artery occlusion, the preservation of the blood supply to the macula from the choroid circulation makes it stand out against the retina made pale by the ischemia. So in central retinal artery occlusion, the preservation of the blood supply to the macula from the choroidal circulation makes it stand out against the retina made pale by the ischemia. So this is the mechanism for cherry red spot in elderly because of central retinal artery occlusion. So cherry red spot is seen in younger individuals and in elderly. In younger individuals, if we see cherry red spot, we have to suspect storage disorders like Tay-Sachs disease. And in elderly persons, if we see cherry red spot, we have to suspect central retinal artery occlusion. So these are all the important concepts of ophthalmoscopy and examination of the fundus, which includes the macula and the arteries. I hope you have liked it. Most of the important neurology co concepts I put in a question answer format in a book focused neurology written by me. It is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. It will be very useful for uh, uh, examination, ex especially oral examinations. Uh, if you like it, you can buy it online. Uh, this lecture on uh, ophthalmoscopy, fundus, macula and retinal arteries, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please like it, share it. But do subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.